Where is it? Can't find the Zoom window. Oh, here. Sorry, so go ahead. I said my wife and I worked out a schedule to spend time with our daughter. My mom is here to help. So we take turns, um, but we never have any time to ourselves. How about you? I spend a lot of time watching movies at home. For the first time, I realized I really enjoy staying at home. I use things I need to go outside, meet people, see shows, and socialize because I'm in New York City. You know what? I'm comfortable without going outside. My boyfriend and I, we just work, cook, work out, and talk about movies. You know, that's the privilege of people without kids. And the privilege of not having to go outside to work. By the way, I got my working visa in May. Wow, congratulations. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, are we starting? No, we are. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see this black hair. Oh my God, it's all over my place. I haven't cleaned for two weeks. Uh, back in Korea, it used to be our family routine to clean all together in a Sunday morning. I kind of miss that fuzzy vibe. By myself here, I'm alone. Uh, I'll change, I'll uh, just come back right away. I just decided to ban myself from social media. It's unhealthy. Public health officials share outdated information in a pandemic. And some of my friends, they really don't understand the George Floyd crisis at all. It's people being murdered, but they only care about their own sense of safety. I should stop. The music video I released during quarantine got a million views. Lucky cat? Yes, the lucky cat. Lucky Ken, Lucky Ken, who you are? Lucky Ken, Lucky Ken, you're a star. Lucky Ken, Lucky Ken, what you do? Lucky Ken, Lucky Ken, I love you. 행운의 고양이 누구니? 행운의 고양이 내 여신. 행운의 고양이 뭐하니? 행운의 고양이 사랑해. My favorite body parts are my eyes because they're not real. I decided to receive plastic surgery to change my eyelids. I feel so proud of myself because it's the first time I feel I own the power to control my own body. I'm Zhao Wen, an immigrant artist and teaching artist. I moved to New York City five years ago, finished two master's degrees and just got my own visa. This is where I'm from, Hangzhou, a beautiful city. That's a Grand Canal from my hometown to Beijing. I used to go from my home on this side of river to a cafe on the other side of river every day. That was 2015. I was studying English to prepare for my TOEFL test to apply to graduate schools in New York City. When I was teaching immigrant kids in Inwood, I took a train from 4th Street all the way to 215th Street. One day when I got outside school, I heard one teacher said there was gun shooting. Classes ended earlier. There were a lot of police officers on the subway station. I asked, what happened? They said, no, everything's perfectly fine. No problem at all. I did not dare to ask more questions and took the subway all the way back. When I got outside and saw everything's perfectly normal in Soho, I feel I was traveling between two different worlds. I like my lips. I have a very thick line. In my age of, I've always heard from friends saying, did you put your lipstick on when I was five years old? I don't know. I just got it from my dad. My shape is exactly the same as my dad, and it's very thick. I've heard as an Asian, you have a very big lip line, and I hated it. But now it's my super attraction. I feel beautiful, I want to believe. I love my lips. I 
I'm Josephine. I grew up in Korea and moved to US 2014. I sometimes feel I'm an immigrant culturally, but I was born in US, so I'm a dual citizen. Thank you, mom and dad for that. I'm a singer, actor, and a teaching artist. I just got married here in February and went to honeymoon right before quarantine. My favorite body parts are my feet. I like walking because it somehow fills my brain. I like to walk in different places, walk, walk for a very long time, walk and walk. I'm Jean. I moved to New York City because, I don't know, because I wasn't able to move to Berlin. I used to be traveling back and forth between Beijing and New York City, but right now I'm based here. Our performer Gloria doesn't have internet access at home, so we made some videos together. Um, actually, audio recordings together. And our another performer, Jose, is probably still working at this time. So you will see him in some videos we made. I met Gloria at Allen Street Neighborhood Center for Seniors. Gloria is originally from Taiwan. But later, I found out that Gloria's parents grew up in Liaoning, the province I'm from in Northeast China. My name is Gloria. I came to New York in 1981 when I was young. I want to live in Japan. Japanese culture was very popular in Taiwan because for half of Central Taiwan was Japanese colony. But my mama said he couldn't support me if I chose Japan. My mom came to Taiwan from Northeast China, which was invited by Japan in the 1930s. They hated the Japanese, but she supported me decision of come to New York City. Before COVID-19, I work at the shelter, take care of kids. I want to learn cloning when everything is back to normal. The kids in the shelter love it. My favorite body parts, my hands. When I walk out, I shake my hands while listen to the radio. It's fun. My favorite body part is my nose because so big, outstanding on my face. When I was in my fourth grade, they used to call me Pinocchio, 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 Pinocchio. But I'm the opposite. I always tell the truth. I'm Jose. I'm originally from El Salvador. I moved to New York City back in 1991. I'm in the East Village outdoors, enjoying riding my little scooter. I hang out a lot in Chinatown. I'm super familiar with all the great food that one can find in there, such as traditional Chinese food from Sichuan and Cantonese style, Taiwan bowl tea style, Vietnamese cafe and sandwiches. Korean chef ice etc etc one day I bought an special plantain from the fruit stand two plantains in one skin I would like to ask you if you were the seller would you count 
a twin plane ten as a one or two? Earlobes, this is a song for my earlobes. The most symmetrical structure on my face. Uh, my grandmother told me people with earlobes will have a very fortunate life. So I have been very fortunate. Um, so I like my ears. I like to listen to music, all kinds of sounds. So let's follow me and give your ears a little bit love. I'm Yu Su. I'm a father and teacher musician. And I teach Mandarin for a living. I live in Brooklyn with my wife, my daughter, and my mom. I used to play so much music before our daughter was born, but I barely have any time now. By the way, this is one of her drawings. That's a princess. She's in her princess face. She gets up, put on a princess dress every morning. I don't know what to deal with it. As a language teacher, I have some questions for you all. Do you have paper and pen ready? Great. So this feels like a classroom. Uh, when I work with my students, I think about how learning a language can give you a new persona. Uh, for myself, I feel freer expressing myself in English than in Mandarin because growing up, I never learned how to express my own feelings in my language. I learned how to do that here from working with people here and watching TVs. So my first question, question is, how old were you when you first started learning English? Next question, how old were you when you first lived in an English speaking environment? Thank you. And how many people did you speak English with in the past week? Oh, Jia Wen, how come so many? I've been stage managing online performances, so I need to talk to everyone. Sometimes I struggle with different accents. Okay, next question. How many people did you speak your native language with in the past week? Now, I invite you to share a challenging moment related to speaking English. For me, it's hard to explain sometimes this idiom, slang, and jokes to um, English speakers. For example, in the film, The Parasite, the Korean movie who just won the Oscars, there is a famous idiom, We usually say that a lot in the daily lives to express this disgusted, nasty, and kind of cheesy feeling. And literal translation to that is, would be, what a scumbag, oh, disgusted, too. But when you go to Korea, people hearing that, usually Korean people remind of this bug with the hundred legs, the house centipede, <laughs> the horrifying looking bug, oh my God. So it's hard to explain this all cultural aspect when translated into um, English. You know, we also have that bug in China. We call it Qian Chuan. Uh, it means a string of coin cash. It actually gives you good luck. All right. <laughs> So I was expected to become an engineer or a scientist when I was young. After I got my engineering degree, I did everything else I could in China, like a bartender, ghostwriter, copywriter, editor. And then after I moved to the US, I found myself not qualified for most of those jobs because I became an English language learner. So I'm stuck with artist jobs. 
and have given up all other career opportunities. But maybe that's a good thing for me. We have another ensemble member who cannot be performing with us today because he found a new job, a full-time job, a month ago. When he was in Columbia, he was a journalist, but his first job in New York City was to demolish a house physically, something he never imagined doing before. Keep your paper and pens. I have some questions for all of us. What's an ideal job for you? Can you be more specific? What jobs have you done before you came to the US? Student. Teacher. Teaching artist. Tutor. Exam proctor. Actor. What jobs have you done in New York City? Teacher. Actor. Receptionist. Translator. Cashier. Law firm assistant. Actor. Um, can you tell us your childhood dream jobs? So please show it to us before you tell us what it is. <clears throat> my very first dream I remember is that I told my mom that I was going to be the first lady president in Korea. When I was a child, I wanted to make radio shows because I really like my voice. And I wanted to be a cop. I wanted to be a deli owner when I was three years old so that I could eat as much candy as I wanted. When I was a kid and I would ride the buses uh, every time, I would write, I would look around and around and say to myself, oh man, oh man, it will be cool to be a driver. I also want to be a lawyer, but of course, I didn't have any idea what I was talking about. I came to the US looking for a place for refuge which could save my life. I wanted to go back. I really wanted to. In 2001, I was studying at FIT, hoping to become an advertising art director. But my English wasn't good enough and I just couldn't compete. As a driver, once I found a job, hauling municipal waste to the landfills. I would sleep in the truck. Then I would line up to pick up the waste in Jamaica, Queens. Drive up I-95N all the way up past Albany and Syracuse City. And finally to Waterloo, upstate New York. The snow season was really scary. In the winter, I saw a few truckers turn over. I don't do that job anymore. I'd rather stay in the city. Now I work as a food delivery person. I'm also a street photographer. I would like to share with you some photos I took during this pandemic.
going to the beach by myself. Friends drinking beer outside at midnight. Besties from my childhood who shared my stupidity and fun. Going to a bathhouse. Writing poems and sharing them with friends. The cultural diversity of my world music band. Fresh bamboo shoots in hot pot. Breakfast stands, uh, yu tiao. Homemade kimchi noodle. Sauerkraut and pork. Family trips and sister chats. Stay close to my mom. My grandma. Mm, mom and dad. Snow that lasts for the whole winter. Forsythia, the yellow flower from my hometown. Chasing grasshoppers, like this. Uh, writing long letters. Feeling confident talking to others. And long phone calls. People smile. Feeling this is my city. Freedom to move and travel. Feeling safe walking on the street. Peace. A good conversation. Making money as a professional. Visiting hospital without worrying about money. Who has close family members living outside the U.S. right now? Well, my mom is stuck here because of COVID-19, uh, but we are very lucky to have her here. Several weeks ago, I had a big cry. My grandpa is 95 years old and he lives in Seoul. He has this memory loss symptom, but not Alzheimer yet. So I'm grateful for that. He and I have this routine of exchanging the handwriting letters each other every Christmas and every New Year. And I want to keep that tradition going on. It's very special and unique for me. And recently I heard from my mom that he doesn't remember who exactly I am. I'm kind of getting used to it. And he started not sending me letters often. And recently I sent him a letter when I got married here when, uh, with a photo of me and my husband and my mom told me that after he read my letter, he went outside with the mask on and walked to a pretty far post office to send me a letter back. I just cried for 30 minutes, just a connection I always forgot about. I was working as a translator for an immigrant service center. Once I took this client to an immigrant office, she gained her asylum status and was applying for her green card. The, she wanted to go back to her original country because her father was dying. The immigrant officer said, you claim as an asylee and were unable to go back to your original country because you fear the serious harm there. How can you go back now? She said she's willing to take the risk because she wanted to see her father for the last time. She was crying and crying and begging and could not speak clearly. I was trying to translate what she said into English. The immigrant officer said to me, you shut up, let her speak for herself. In the end, she did not get the permit from the immigrant office. She ended up staying here when her father died. In March, we uh, did a ceremony for my father who passed away last summer. We rented a boat, um, got some flowers, and scattered his ash into the Hudson Bay. That's the funeral he wanted. He said, if you buy a grave and you have to fly over and spend money to visit me. Now, if you look at the ocean, you know I'm there. Um, actually, that's the reason why my mom is here. Um, she brought over his ash uh, in a suitcase uh, in, on a plane. Watermochin 
，如果我在他的身边，他会很舒服、很快乐。但是我自己知道，面对现实，我是不能动的。从生病到他去世中间有一年多，我很痛苦。那个痛苦是二十四小时的煎熬，心里一想到他就会流泪，很无奈的情形。我母亲走了。当你知道母亲走了，也没有地方哭泣，因为我的室友都要休息，我只好躲在浴室里哭泣。那种失落感好像在风里飘零，不知道东南西北风会把我吹到哪里去。到了很多年以后，我回到台湾，村子里就会有人来骂我，因为他们认为。你的母亲走了，你都不回来，他们的态度就是你是那种最不孝顺的孩子What's your relationship with your hometown? I feel my hometown is kind of my fantasy. I still feel I'm responsible for that society and that place, but I also feel powerless because um, I've been away for a long time, and I'm not sure if I still have a position in that society to. Do something or participate in something. Well, isn't that the same relationship you you have with your best childhood friend? We used to have this amazing bond,、uh, but so many years have passed. I read that human bodies replace itself with a new set of cells every seven to nine years. So you're literally a new a new person, and you have to when you sit down together, you have to pretend that you you're the the person that you you were. You know, you have to try really hard. I agree. I want to know about the places we are all from, and we're gonna do this together. I have one minute for you to draw something about our hometown. Okay, ready? Go. Time's up. The city was built around coal mines and heavy industry. After decades of excavation, most of the coal mines are exhausted. The grand open pit coal mine was turned into a park. Locomotive fans from all over the world go there to see the remaining locomotives. They're beautiful, even romantic. Today, it feels really cool to see those and to see the magnificent Komai Park. But for people living there, it also means the city is left behind 
in economy and in history. Fu Xing. Uh, this is what we call a da pai dang in Mandarin. Um, basically means people eating barbecue and drinking in the street. It happens in the summer. Uh, at a da pai dang, you will see a lot of men without their shirts, uh, drinking and getting drunk and ready to start fights. So when I visit home in the summer, I really look forward to a night out like this because it's just so relaxing to be around people who don't care about Western social conventions. Baldi. I miss all the nature in Korea. Do you know that 70% of Korea is mountains? I miss going hiking and skiing. I had a hard time finding a ski area here. I miss this clean and beautiful East Sea in Korea. I also miss these yellow flowers in my hometown. It used to be our house symbol since my family had a garden full of these. When I might meet my friends, we usually say, meet you around these yellow flowers. So, I miss the humidity in Hangzhou. Everyone's complaining how humid New York is in summer, but I love it. When I feel the humidity from the ground, the couch, the air, the bedding sheet, I can feel my hometown. It feels like I'm surrounded and protected by my hometown again. Hangzhou. One day, a person showed me a picture of a futuristic round building. It looks like a civil ball. I asked, wow, cool, where is it? He said, this is your hometown. I've never seen that building while I was in Hangzhou. Recently, there are so many new buildings. I feel I don't know my hometown anymore. You have been watching us for a long time now. And we are also curious about where you are and what space you are in. So we would like to invite you to join us and move. Be prepared to move your body and also your devices, no matter it's a laptop, tablet, or a cell phone. If you wanna join, you can use the raise hand button at the bottom of Zoom. It might be here or here. Yeah, that button. And also you can type something in Q&A so we can invite you to become a panelist and then invite you to open your camera so that you can be seen by others. Sometimes there are issues with the Zoom system. So you might get kicked out during this process, but no worries, just use the same link to join us again. <laughs> Show me your left hand.
Show me your ceiling. Show me your left hand under your ceiling. Show me the cup you're using. The cup. Show me an object other people don't have. Javan, give us some music. Can you let me share the music? <laughs> Show me how you dance with your full body. with your device in your hand. Be safe. Can you let me be a co-host?
1446 in Korea, King Sejong created the Korean alphabet. He thought Korea needed our own writing system so that we are not dominated by Chinese culture anymore. Of course, we had our spoken language, but not the letters. By creating the new alphabet, King Sejong also increased the literacy of people. And thanks to that, Korean people could find the cultural identity and unity. It was 1446, Hangul letters were created. I grew up under China's Wang Chao policy and never thought about it. Most of my friends, families, and classmates are the only childs in their families. When every family is the same, I kind of had an illusion that this is the only and natural family structure. I never questioned about it, even when my mom had abortion. In October 2015, Chinese government announced to abolish the Wang Chai policy. Suddenly I realized most of my growing up experience are shaped by the government policies instead of natural choices. It was 2015, China abolished the Wang Chao policy. I was looking at my phone day and night when COVID-19 broke out in Wuhan. At the beginning, the local government was trying to downplay or hide the situation. There was only hearsay, but I knew it was serious because I experienced a SARS in Beijing in 2003. Later, the US failed to detect or contain the spread of the virus. Different countries reacted to the situation differently. No matter if it's authoritarian or democratic, human arrogance and, and bureaucracy are deadly. It's 2020, COVID-19 hits the world. In 1966, Mao started the Cultural Revolution. Millions of people were prosecuted and many, many died. And my family also suffered terrible loss. And I'm still dealing with the transgenerational trauma. It was 1966 when the Cultural Revolution began. I worked as a flower arrangement artist. One morning, I was working in one of the water center buildings, run up and down to different offices. I got along well with these receptionist girls. Well, I was in the basement. I hear something was on fire, but I was only thinking about finish my work and go home. I keep working. Then the elevator shut down. Later, people were run out of the building. I don't know what happened. I followed them out. It was dark outside. There was smoke everywhere. I walked and walked until I arrived home in Canada. I was very tired. I sleep for the whole day in the evening. I discover on TV, the building was melt like a chocolate. My body was poisoned by the smoke for years. It was hard for me to take care of myself and I couldn't work. When I finally recover, I start working again. I need to stand on my own feet. It was 2001-9-11 happened near my community. Almost no one wants to talk about money publicly, but it is important and political. I will ask questions. 
I'm studying questions that you can answer with your fingers from one to five. One is the lowest, five is the highest. When you were in your home country, how rich did you feel about yourself from one to five? When you are in New York City, how rich do you feel about yourself from one to five? How important is money in your life from one to five? Could you rate the importance of saving from one to five? What are you saving money for? A new house. Visiting Berlin. Having kids and pets. Uh, give it to my mom. Giving allowances to grandparents. Taking care of my parents. Take kids back home, but I really able to save any money. To feel secure. In terms of money, what has surprised you in the United States? A lot of people live paycheck by paycheck. People use so much cash um, and they still use checks. The education tuition and insurance are insane. So hard to read the coins here. And the tipping culture is too complicated. Yeah, I'm surprised that it exists. When you go back to visit your home country, do you feel this perception of money has changed? Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely feel more poor when I go to China. I've been here for 10 years. And in the past 10 years, a lot of my friends caught the wave of economic boom um, while I was picnicking at Prospect Park. So they got rich. And I still think twice before getting a cup of Starbucks coffee. Um, they can afford all kinds of fancy things for their children that I cannot. I feel I don't know the appropriate price or value of every product because my memory is still five years ago. Now the price changed so fast in China. I just feel outdated there. People use cell phone to pay. In the restaurant, you don't have to go to see a waiter. You just order online. I didn't know that. They were like, who are you? Did you come from a cave or forest? <laughs> I feel both Seoul and New York are high price and high consumption cities. Um, all little different categories though. Each city has different values on different things. Um, US housing, educational uh, tuition, insurance, transportations are way more expensive than Korea. Um, but Korea has way more expensive uh, electronic devices, fruits, coffee, or fashion brand clothes. What's your identity? I'm a musician and artist. Other than that, what's your identity? Mm, I'm Korean and American. Other than that, what's your identity? I'm a daughter, wife, granddaughter, and a friend. Other than that, what's your identity? Uh, I'm a person of color and a woman and human being. Does skin color matter? Yes, kind of a lot on this planet. People judge and have expectations for your color. What are stereotypes about your race? Mm, humble, acceptant, very naive, very kind and very hardworking. Does citizenship matter? Yes. Dual citizenship is very interesting um, to see how different countries see it differently. In Korea, I was felt jealousy. Josephine, I'm ready. Should the government help people in need? 
Yes, if this still require people to pay tax. What's the purpose of a social welfare system? So we don't kill each other. Should the system help people who are temporarily struggling? Yes. Should they help people who are always struggling? Yeah. Have you ever been to an ER? Uh, once I cut my finger a bit deeper than I usually do. I was bleeding really badly, so I went to the nearest ER. There were so many people waiting. I sat there for hours and I realized I stopped bleeding, so I went home. Have you ever been to an urgent care? What's the difference between ER and urgent care? Do you have health care? Yes. What change would you want to make to the health care system? To make it free and available to everybody. Do you think doctors are making too much money? Uh, I think they should be well compensated for the work they do. Uh, it's where the money comes from matters. Do you think nurses are making too much money? I don't know how much nurses make here, but American nurses are very nice and they treat people very well. Um, I know in China, um, nurses get treated, very, um, paid very poorly and treat people very poor. Do you think insurance companies are making too much money? I think pri private company will always prioritize their profits. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think the US government has made enough money to take care of the sick and poor, but they're not doing enough. This is turn to me. What do you own in this country? A MacBook, an iPad, an iPhone, a Kindle, a bicycle, electric scooter, a DVD player, two humidifiers, 50 books, a lot of clothes, and some shoes. What do you want to own in this country? My own loft in lower Manhattan with a dryer and a washer. What can't you own in this country? A permit to work any job, come back to the United States without applying for a new visa every time. Unemployment insurance. Do you own real estate property? Yes, I own apartment in China. Should everybody own real estate? Not necessary. Uh, what makes the rich people rich? Their families, their social class, their personal choice, career development, and investment. And what separates the rich from the poor? Race and social class. Okay, and should the rich bear more social responsibilities? Yes. In what countries are people more equal? The countries with the better social welfare for everybody. Do you want to pay tax? Absolutely no. Dawan, turn to me. Do you care about the environment? Yes, but I'm not doing much. Do you believe global warming? Yes. Do you care about animals? Yes. Do you eat animals? Yes. What animals do you eat? Um, pig, sheep, cattle, um, duck, chicken, fish, shrimp, maybe a couple more. What do you think about mass international tourism? Um, I used to really enjoy it but it's not sustainable. It hurts the environment. And I'm not sure if it's making the world more equal or less. Is it okay to lie to immigrant office? Yes. Have you lied to immigrant office? No, I didn't have to. Are you a liar? Yes. Why do people migrate? 
some people don't have other choices. And sometimes people get bored or get hurt, so they move. Where do immigrants belong to? I don't know. Maybe their families themselves. Should first generation immigrants go protest on street? Do we as immigrants have to choose one culture over another? What do you think about assimilation? Do you feel you're a New Yorker? Did you ever have deep relationship in New York City? Did you ever have long lasting friendships in New York City? Did you ever regret coming to US? Did you have other choices? Did you get what you wanted? What kept you here? What have you lost? Did you think about the loss before you came? Do you think it was worth it? There's the stress uh, caused by social isolation and being out of your cultural environment. And you have to deal with the emotional pain caused by being so far away from home. What does home to me mean? What does home to me any anyway? Um, I missed so many birthdays, weddings, funerals. I didn't get to say goodbye to my grandma before she passed away. And for the rest of my life, I have to deal with it. There are lots of things going going on really well in my life. My family, my daughter, my job. I love the city. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But I think my life wouldn't necessarily be worse if I stayed in China. I'm losing the beautiful part of Chinese culture. Here, I write in English, so more and more I think in English. I feel I'm losing the ability to write artistically. On the other hand, living in a place other than my home country really allows me to understand different perspectives of looking at the world. Also, as an artist in New York City, I found so many resources that can help me grow. Back in my hometown, I feel only stuff was so natural. I own this, I own that. But here I take myself as a device. I keep absorbing things and losing stuff. It's a natural process, but I become a happier and more powerful person because I receive constant help and support from my friends. They keep believing in me even when I don't believe in myself. Now I feel I have a power to help someone else. Loneliness, the loss of family connection. Being different and being a foreigner here feels really lonely. If I achieve something in career or if I celebrate my birthday or holidays, it looks always smaller. But I believe living here, I definitely got matured. I do better self-manage my life, taking care of myself and taking responsibilities of my life better. Maybe I know better how to live as an artist. I'm away from my family, not being able to see my parents for a long time. Since I came here until I went back for the first time, that was more than seven years. Here I am able to interact with other cultures, learn from other cultures and other religions. Also learn other languages such as English and Chinese and learn the art. I think it was worth it. I am single. That's good. 
I don't feel great, but I don't feel so bad. I uh, feel like I need to do more exercise. Back in Taiwan, I had a lot of friends. Here in New York, I'm on my own alone. There is no winter in Taiwan, so I got to experience winter in here. When I was forced to move out my place on Christmas Eve, I couldn't cry. The cold winter would make my tears freeze. Don't compare. A person is like a tree. And a tree cannot have two sets of roots. At a certain point, you have to make a decision on where you want to settle down. You always lose something. Don't compare. Life is not for comparing. here with us today. Uh, now we have 15 minutes for a casual chat. So if you have any thoughts, any comments or questions for either for us or for one another, please stay and join us. And you can still use the raise hand button to let us know you want to speak and we'll invite you to speak. And it's okay if you don't want to start your video. You can also type in Q&A part. And uh, I'm sending out our uh, Facebook, Instagram link and the link to Lucky Cat Sound. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And as I'm moving people into panelists, I want to invite uh, our performer, Jose, to share a poem with us. Hi. Hi, how you doing everybody? How you doing uh, everybody? Hi Jose. Hey, hi, hi. So good to see you. Good to see you all. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading um a poem by uh Roque Dalton. Roque Dalton uh, was a Salvadorian um poet and he he saw art as a revolutionary art. The act. Um, he uh, he wrote this for me. Original version is in Spanish. It's uh, in English. Is like it's it's called like you. Uh, so it's it goes like this. Yo, como tú, amo el amor, la vida, el dulce encanto de las cosas. El paisaje celeste de los días de enero. También mi sangre bulle y río por los ojos. Que han conocido el brote de las lágrimas. Creo que el mundo es bello. Que la poesía es como el pan. 
de todos. Que mis venas no terminan en mí, sino en la sangre unánime de los que luchan por la vida, el amor, las cosas, el paisaje y el pan. La poesía de todos. Um, it was written a while ago, but it's, it's so current nowadays. That's why. Could you Thank tell you so much. You, you, you want me to read, uh, you want me to read uh, the, uh, the English version too? So, yeah. I would love to hear it because I, I don't understand Spanish. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll do it. Yeah, thank you. Like you. I love love, life, the sweet smell of things, the sky blue landscape of January days, and my blood boils up, and I laugh through eyes that have known the buds of tears. I believe the world is beautiful, and the poetry like bread is for everyone, and that my veins don't end in me, but in the unanimous blood of those who struggle for life, love, little things, lambs, cake, and bread, the poetry of everyone. Roque Dalton. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. So anyone wants to just chat with us? Um, it's really the time for all of us to chat a little bit, yeah. Oh, I see two people raise their hand. Yeah. Hi, hey, Joshua. <laughs> um, you're, you're still muted. Josh, you muted. I uh, asked, oh, yeah. great. Yeah, we can hear you. We're just trying to. Hello. 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 There, there are people out here. <laughs> so. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Allison. Hi, Jess. Hello. I could do a spontaneous poem. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wow. Jaw Wen, yeah. charades, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Funny, real job, artists make money, fresh bamboo shoots in hot pot, like flute, watch drawing, crumpling, identity, chair, coins. Woo! Wow, that's really beautiful. Thank you for the poem. Yeah, thank you for all attention for our words from the performance. <laughs> yeah. Well, one uh, question that came to my mind was about the scope of immigration, because uh, for people from New York, or, you know, people who are New Yorkers, like, at this point, I think you probably consider yourselves to be New Yorkers. I think we all know that the city is not really connected to the rest of the country. So you're immigrating to New York City as a completely separate country. But I'm not sure how that awareness came through in the, um, in, in the dialogue or trialogue or quadrilogue, quintilogue. And I can say something. I, I just, it, I can absolutely uh, identify that uh, what you said about New York being somewhere else. Uh, so I was, I was in, I, I was riding my bicycle down in Brooklyn. I went somewhere that had to drive through. Uh, I was, my mind was like, well, what is a drive drive through? I've never seen that in New York, right? So I was so surprised because it's so unique. Um, um, but I just think. Even within New York City, we have their own s segregations and um, separations, uh, different layers of people who don't necessarily see each other. Um, 
So um, one of my favorite things about being here, uh, working with these people is I got to meet Jose and Gloria um, and hear their stories. Um, but I do think about how Im Im immigrants is almost like a, a pseudo concept because there's so many different types of immigrants that come from everywhere with different backgrounds, resources and privileges. Um, and I do think about how within the scope of this project, what are the things we can do to, to problematize that? And, and yeah, it is, it is something that I do think about. Yeah, I can also share some of my experience because um, I was applying for my uh, visa and I saw me my case um, in April, that time quarantine just started. And uh, I now like, I've never thought about like, should I stay here until like now, like as Josh, you said, we, I feel like separate from like, kind of separate from my home country and I got stuck here. I cannot go visit my mom and my mom cannot come visit me. And uh, I have a lot of doubts for my choice staying here. And I think that um, our thoughts like got reflected in our last chapter, like, was it worth it? Now we're thinking about the, what we, our pain, our gain. And uh, um, yeah, we keep thinking like, is the right choice we make? And uh, who are we in the future? So I think it's like a, this a constant, um, like path for me to explore and I don't know the answer yet but I'm glad like right now I have the question this question in my mind and stop thinking oh I need to stay in the United States because I can get everything I want um there's a lot of challenges and pain um yeah and I think because uh we developed this performance from the projects we have at university settlement. So all these experiences mainly come from our interactions and engagements with people who are participants in uh, university settlements adult literacy program and their senior center and their other programs. So I think um, for most of us and people we know from there, um, I think only a portion of us really made the choice of coming to New York City. Um, most of them just came to the US, but they end up at a place, it's New York. It's different and it gives you more opportunity, more freedom, make you feel more protected. But at the same time, many things still remind us that it's still a part of the US because we, we have all kinds of people, all kinds of opinions in New York City, but we do feel blessed that we end up being here. I think that's something we have in common um, while we were developing this. And um, Aine, <laughs> is it early morning for you? Welcome, thank you for coming. Good morning here, I am, my name is Aine. Um, I met Jin uh, um, last year already. Um, in a class at New York University. And um, I am right now in Tokyo, Japan, um, because my husband lives in Tokyo and I was in New York by myself. Um, I'm also dual citizen. Um, so I was like half immigrant, half US citizen, but mainly I'm Japanese. Um, it was it was a wonderful show. Um, I I I have to admit that I started watching in my bed <laughs> and and so many um, like the stage setting I would say online stage setting was very interesting and also the multiple stories I always constantly ask myself whether I want like because I, I'm currently I'm looking into the ways I, I will be able to go back to the United States or be out of Japan again so that I can present my works as a woman artist and it's really hard to do it in Japan. So I, I really want to continue my path as an artist. And I kept um, asking myself, like, is it worth it? <laughs> I will be away from my family again. And so um, thank you. <laughs> thank you 
thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone in the audience want, want to talk? You can raise your hand. I see Ursula. May I invite you? And who else? Kristen? Hi, Ursula. Hi. I was going to type in the chat uh, saying congratulations for this inspiring uh, and beautiful and um, very honest uh, show about uh, your own experiences um, but also as artists and human beings. Um, and I was gonna, um, like my internet, it's very really, like, it's unstable. That's why I like kind of logged out before. Um, I was gonna ask, uh, how did you came up with the script? Like, and this structure, was it uh, like based on what you had done throughout this, uh, like the, the workshop or, so yeah, that, that was my question. Do you wanna answer this, Jarwan? Oh yeah, um, so um, this project started from uh, last October and uh, we uh, had a partnership with the uh, performance project at Universe Settlement. And the first uh, we uh, like did a lot of like uh, open workshops. We first like um, go to the adult literacy classes and do some uh, theater activities. And then we invite people to our open workshop. And then we um, have like different themes for the workshop. And then um, th we uh, developed like, oh, what we really want to do for the performance. And then we invite our participant to join our ensemble workshop to develop our uh, script together. And all those scripts came from um, the theme in the past workshop and also through like our conversations, our interaction with the participants, see what people are interested in. And uh, we did a lot of like theater activities and uh, we uh, recorded like a lot of like, we have a lot of recordings and the videos and uh, we try to like uh, use people's authentic words in our uh, performance. So we are all telling our own stories, which we shared in our workshop. And uh, um, as for the structure, uh, I think Jean, you can share a little bit about your thoughts. Um, yes, basically all those uh, themes come from our workshop themes. And those are things we discovered were interesting for um, people from the community and also interesting for us. So we did a lot of exploration around that. And then after that was just building a performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanna also share some uh, comments we received from Q&A. Paula Weiss uh, wrote, we thought those questions you all posed were really interesting. Thank you for saying that because we, we really only can speak for ourselves, <laughs> not for people we have been working with. So what we were trying to do is to bring up questions um, people from that community find interesting, find uh, meaningful. So I really appreciate that you, you noticed all those questions we posed. Yeah, and also from uh, Susan McAllister, am I pronouncing that right? Thank you for sharing your personal experiences with us. My apologies for not staying for the whole chat. That's okay. And also one more comment for, uh, uh, from Kristen. I just wanna say congratulations to seeing this uh, through during a pandemic. I loved how you explored stage pictures and music through Zoom. And thank you for saying that. We are really lucky to have two musicians in this ensemble. And, but we are also feeling not lucky because we have more um, performers from the university settlement community who cannot perform with us because they need to work more than before during this pandemic. And even Jose, Jose uh, had to work and couldn't join all of our rehearsals. So we ended up making videos, but 
I, I find those videos really amazing. Thank you, Jose, for making those. Oh, my pleasure. And it, yeah, it's time. So thank you everyone for coming and for your thoughts, for talking with us. Thank you. I hope we can keep in touch. Thank you for joining.